Hey, my name is Mike. I'm a developer with Code Academy, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through setting up your local environment in order to start building Flask apps. And so up until this point, we've been mainly building our Flask apps on the Code Academy learning environment. But in order to move from that environment into your local environment, there's gonna be a couple things that you need to set up. The first thing that we're gonna to have to do if we wanna start creating Flask apps on our local machine is create what's called a virtual environment. Now, when we're building Flask apps, there's gonna be a lot of things called dependencies, which we need to work with. And all of these different dependencies have potentially different versions, and they might interact with different versions of Python differently. And so a virtual environment is going to be an isolated environment on our computer where we can control all of the different dependencies and the versions of those dependencies so that they interact with our Flask app correctly. This will also allow us to control which version of Python we're using in order to run Flask. Now in my case, on my local machine, I have Python installed. So I can just type in Python dash dash version and you can see that I have a Python 2.7.15 version installed. I also have a version of Python 3 installed. So if I type in Python 3 dash dash version, you see I have Python 3.8.2. Now it's this Python 3 version which I'm gonna to wanna to use in order to create the virtual environment. So with my Python 3 program, I'm gonna say Python 3 dash M V E N V and then the name of the app that I want to create. So in this case, why don't we just call it my app? Now this V E N V program is actually something that Python's gonna give us by default. And you can look over here, there is documentation for this on the official Python website. And it's here talking about virtual environments and packages. So basically this VENV command is going to create a virtual environment on my machine where I can control all of the different versions and the different dependencies that my Flask app is going to use. And that's generally the recommended way to build an app like this. So we can just hit enter and you'll see what happens in a second. Over here, a new folder got created, which is called My App. And this new folder was created by Python 3 by that VENV command. And so this is now the folder where we can go ahead and start building our Flask app. So I'm gonna CD into My App. And now that we're in here, we can actually start building our app. So you'll notice that a few different folders got generated and I'm not gonna spend too much time going through these, but basically this lib folder contains copies of all of the different dependencies that your app is gonna use. And by default, uh, VENV has just put a few different dependencies in there for us. There's also this include folder, which will include anything that you want to include into your app. And then here's a bin folder, which contains a bunch of different executable scripts that we can run in order to do different things. So you can see here, we have, for example, pip, and we have Python, all these different things that we're gonna need to use. So there's one final step that we need to do in order to set up this virtual environment, which is activate it. And activating it is gonna make it so we're actually operating within the virtual environment instead of from our local machine anymore. Now there's a different way to do this depending on if you're on Windows or if you're on Mac. I'm on Mac, so I'm gonna show you the Mac version, but I'll also show you the Windows version right after. So you're just gonna type out source, and then you're gonna type out bin forward slash activate. And what this is gonna do is it's going to activate our virtual environment. And you'll see here that my command line prompt changed a little bit. So now in these parentheses, I have my app. And that's just an indicator that we're now in this virtual environment. If you want to get out of this virtual environment, all you have to do is type in the deactivate command and then it'll deactivate it. Now, in my case, I wanna stay in here, so I'm gonna activate it again. And so if you're on Windows, it's a similar command, except this time you're gonna run scripts backslash activate dot bat, and that should do exactly the same thing. So that's the commands for Windows and Mac, and now that we have our virtual environment set up, uh, we can actually start building our Flask app. But before we do that, let me just point out one thing. So you remember before, when I ran this Python dash dash version command, I had a version of Python that was version two. But now when I run this, you'll see it's Python version three. And this is one of the benefits of using this virtual environment is now my Python version is set to the version that I used to create the virtual environment, which was 3.8.2. Okay, so now that we're in the virtual environment, let's start installing some of the dependencies that we're gonna need for our application. So the first thing we'll do is we'll say pip install flask. And what this is gonna do is it's going to install all the dependencies that we need to start up our flask app. 
And you'll notice here if we look in the bin folder that now we have this Flask folder in here and there's a couple other dependencies in here as well. These are all things that Flask is going to use. We're also going to install one extra thing which is going to allow us to build out forms in Flask which is called Flask WTF. So I'm going to say pip install Flask underscore WTF and this will help us like I said with forms. So once again, if you look in your lib folder, you'll see now that we have a dependency for that. So the next step is to actually start writing the code for our Flask app. So I'm going to create a new file in here in my directory and I'm going to call it app.py. Now this is the default name that we're going to need for our Flask app. And in here we can start writing some of that Flask code that we've been looking at over the last couple of lessons. So the first thing we'll do is we'll import Flask. So we can say from Flask import flask and then we're also going to import a couple other things that we're going to need so we're also going to need render template and finally we'll need request so these things will come in handy later once we start setting up a basic form we're also going to import that flask wtf library that we just installed so i'll say from flask wtf i want to import and this is going to be called flask form and then finally we'll say from wt forms we're going to import string field and submit field. So these will be used as fields on the form that we eventually create. Next, we'll say that our app is going to be equal to flask and we're going to have in here underscores and then name. And then finally, we're going to set a secret key. So I'm going to say app.config and then in square brackets, we're going to put secret key in all caps and we're gonna set that equal to a secret key. Now in my case, I'm just gonna set it equal to my secret since this is just sort of a starter app. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna define one of our routes. So remember, the routes are definitions for where the user can go in our app and what types of operations they can perform on those routes, whether they're get operations, post operations, etc. So we'll say in here, app.route, and that's going to have inside of it a forward slash, so this is just going to handle any requests that get made to basically the home page, like the root directory of our site. And then over here, we'll define the different types of methods that we're going to accept. Now, eventually, we're going to have both get and post requests being made to this. So let's just put both of those in there for now. So we'll say get and post. Next, we'll define an index method. And this is going to be the method that handles any of these requests that get made. And so let's just test this out. Why don't we return hello world and then we'll come down here and we'll run our app. So running the Flask app here from your local environment is very easy. All you have to do is say Flask run. And as long as you're in the correct directory here in your my app directory, and as long as you have an app.py file, then this should work. So I'm gonna hit app.run and now you'll see that our site is running on 127.0.0.1 at port 5000. This is also known as local host. So let's go over here and take a look. I have this open over here on this other tab and you'll see that it's printing out hello world. So that looks good to me. Looks like our site's working as expected. Now let's add in a little bit of extra functionality, right? This is a good app, but it's not really doing too much. So why don't we create an app that allows us to handle to-dos? So this will be kind of like a to-do list app and we can have the user enter in the to-dos that they want to perform. So a good first step to this is to create a template. And a template is just HTML that we can use on this page over here. So instead of just uh, rendering out a string like we're doing right now, we could actually render out an entire HTML document. So let's create a new folder here at the root directory and we're gonna call it templates. And this templates folder is the place where we can store all of our HTML templates that we'll eventually be showing to the user. So inside the templates folder, let's create an index.html file, and this will be what gets rendered by our index method. It's always a good idea to have the method name over here match the name of the file. So in this file, why don't we just generate an HTML document? Now my text editor allows me to do that with a single click of a button, but in your case, you can just copy out all of this HTML. This is sort of like the most uh, basic structure of an HTML document. So once again, uh, we want to have to-dos, so why don't we just put that here, to-dos, and now we'll hook this template up with our index method. So instead of just returning hello world, instead we're going to return 
the result of rendering a template. So we'll say return render template. And remember, this is that thing that we imported up there before when we first started creating our app. And so inside of here, we can put the name of the template file. In this case, it's index.html. So let's save this. And now if we restart our app and we come back over to our website, now you'll see that we have that HTML document being shown instead of hello world. So the next thing that we can do is start setting up our app so that it can use to-dos. Now all of our to-dos could be stored in a database, or in this case, since we're building a simple app, why don't we just store them here in the memory of our computer in this app? So I'm gonna create a array here, which is called to-dos, and inside of here, why don't we put a couple to-dos? So we can say, learn Flask, that can be one of our to-dos. We could also say, set up VENV, which we already did. And then why don't we have one more, build a cool app. So we have three to-dos, learn Flask, set up VENV, and then build a cool app. And we're gonna wanna render these out over here on our template, so on our web browser. We want the user to be able to see them. So what I can do is inside of this render template method, I can actually put a comma and we'll pass in another argument. So I could say over here, to-dos is gonna be equal to to-dos. And so when we do this, I'm basically specifying that the template is going to get a variable that it can use called to-dos, and I'm setting that equal to the to-dos that we have over here. And so now let's go back over into our template and we can actually render out all of these to-dos. So why don't we put like a header one here and we can say to-dos, and then down here, we'll actually start rendering out some of these to-dos. Now I'm gonna use a for loop in order to do this. So inside of these curly brackets, we'll actually write some Python code. So I'm gonna say for to-do in to-dos. Now remember, this to-dos variable was given to us over here, right? So over here, I specified that to-dos has a value of all of the to-dos that are up here and that are defined. So I'm saying for to do in to do's, and then down here we can say end for, so we'll end off our for loop. And why don't we put the name of the to do here inside of a list item? So we can say to do just like that. And I'll put some spaces on here so it's easier to see. Okay, so now we have a for loop which loops over all of the to do's in our program and then puts them into list items. So now if we refresh our page, and actually we need to reset our server before we do that. So now we'll refresh and you'll see that we have our nice header one and then all of our to-dos are set up here in the for loop. And if we want to see how this works in the internals, you can see here's our HTML and we just have all of these different to-dos that are listed out just like that. So it's the code that we rendered over here. So that's step one and that's looking pretty good, right? We can now display all of our to-dos. But there's another thing that we want to do, which is we want to allow the user to add their own to-dos, right? We kind of hard-coded these ones in, but we want the user to be able to say what they want to do. In order to do that, we're going to need a form. Now, there's a couple different ways that we could set up forms in a Flask app, but the way that we've been learning so far in this course is using the WTF forms, so those Flask WTF forms. And so I think that's probably the best way for us to do it in this project. Now we've already imported everything that we need. So we have flask form and we also have a string field and a submit field. And so down here we can create a class which we could call to do form. And inside of here, we're gonna pass in a flask form and we'll put a colon. And then inside this class, we're gonna define a couple things. So the first thing we'll do is define this variable here. And this is going to be the form field. So this will be the field where the user enters in there to do. So this is gonna be a string field. And once again, this is something that we imported earlier. And inside of here, we're gonna say to do. So this is just gonna be like the, the label or the text that tells the user what this field is for. And then finally, we'll put a submit button. So when the user hits the submit button, then our HTTP request, it's gonna be a post request, will get sent over to our route and then we'll be able to handle it. So over here, I'm gonna say submit field, and this is just gonna say add to do. All right, so we have our form set up, and then the next step is to pass that form over here into our template. So here I'm gonna say template form, and this is just another one of those arguments that we can pass in. And that's gonna be equal to to do form, 
and a new instance of it. So I'm creating a new instance of the to do form class and I'm passing that into template form. Okay, so now that we're passing in the template form, we can come back over to our HTML and we can write out the HTML for that. So we're gonna create a form field and this is gonna have a method which is post. So basically that means that when this form gets submitted, it's going to make a post request. Basically it'll make a request to our server in order to create one of these to-dos. Now inside of here, we can start using that form WTF that we set up. So inside of the double curly brackets here, I'm gonna say template form dot hidden tag. And this is basically going to ensure that our form is secure. So remember before we set up this app.config secret key, this is basically what this is doing. So this form will sort of interact with our server using that secret key in order to validate the request. And that's just something that we need to do for security purposes. So now let's create a paragraph and inside of here we'll put the field for the to-do. So I'm gonna say template form dot to do dot label. And remember over here in app.py we set the to-do here and then we set the label text right there. So there's our label and then why don't we just copy this and we're gonna put this down here. And now we're just gonna say dot to do and then in open and close parentheses. So this will create the actual text field where we can put our to do. And then finally down here, why don't we create a submit button? I'll put it in another paragraph. And this is going to be, instead of template form to do, this is just gonna be template form submit. So this should end up creating a submit button for us. All right, so why don't we reset our server and make sure that we didn't make any errors. So I'm gonna come over here, I'll refresh the page, and you'll see now that we have this really nice form. So I could put my to-dos in here, and then I can click add to-do, and it'll make a post request to my server. The last thing that we need to do is we need to modify the server so that it's able to handle a post request. And basically, we'll make the post request with the to-do information, maybe like take out the garbage, and that will then add it to this to-dos list and then this list up here should get updated. So we'll add another thing here. Now our form is already set up to accept a post request, but down here in the index method, we need to write some code. So I'm gonna say if to-do in request.form. Now I imported this request library up here, it's from Flask, and what I'm saying in this line of code is I'm saying if a post request, or if really any request is made and it has a to do attribute, then down here we want to do something. So down here I'm going to say to do's, which is this array of to do's that we have up here, dot append, and then in here we're gonna put request dot form and we'll grab that to do parameter. So once again, here we're checking to see if the request got made and it had a to-dos field on it, and if it did, then we'll append that to-do to this to-dos array, and we can get the to-do by saying request.form for the to-do. So that should be enough for our app to be complete, assuming we didn't make any mistakes. So let's restart the server, and then we'll try this out. So we'll refresh just to make sure everything is good. And let's say we have a to-do for take out the garbage. So when I click this, it should make that post request, add it to the to-dos array and then refresh the page so that the new to-do is added to that list. And you'll see here that when I click add to-do, it does exactly that. And then let's do another one. Why don't we do go to work? So we'll add that to-do as well and you can see that it's getting added to the list. So that's basically it. That's how we can build a sort of basic bare bones Flask app on our local environment. And you'll notice here that it's very similar to the way that we built these in the Codecademy environment, right? except we had to create a virtual environment so that we could manage all of our dependencies and we created our templates folder manually over here. But from this point on, everything should be exactly the same as you've been doing it on Code Academy. So all of the skills that you've been learning should transfer over into this environment as well. So that's all I have for today. I wanna to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.